lesson is about properties of operations on integers. Now, what are those properties of operations? We have commutative property, associative property, distributive property, identities, and inverses. Let us start with commutative property. It states that the order of the items or factors does not affect their result. For example, a plus b is equal to b plus a. Say we have 5 plus 3. As you observe, a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 3. It is said that in commutative property, 5 plus 3 is equivalent to 3 plus 5. Now, if we add 5 plus 3, the answer is 8. And if we add 3 plus 5, the answer is also 8. This proves that the order of the addends does not affect the result. Another example. Say we have 2 plus negative 4, which will be equal to negative 4 plus 2. From what we have studied about addition of integers, 2 plus negative 4, the answer is negative 2. And negative 4 plus 2, the answer is also negative 2. Next one. a times b is equal to b times a. So say for example, our a is 4 and our b is 3. So we will have 4 times 3. And this will be equal to 3 times 4. So let's take a look if the result will not be affected by its order. 4 times 3, the answer is 12. 3 times 4, the answer is also 12. So as you observe, the order of the factors does not affect our product, which is 12. Another, say we have negative 5 times 2, this will be equivalent to 2 times negative 5. So negative 5 times 2, from what we have studied about multiplication of integers, if they have different signs, the answer will be negative. So we will have here negative 10. Say with 2 times negative 5. The answer will also be negative 10. Now this is what commutative property is all about. Next one, associative property. It states that the groupings of the addends or factors does not affect the result. A while ago in commutative property, it is about the order. Well, here in associative property, it is about groupings. We have 2 plus 3 plus 5. This will be equal to 2 plus 3 plus 5. In here, you need to perform first what's inside the parentheses. So 2 plus 3, we have 5. Plus 5 is equal to 2. Now, we have to perform first what's inside the parentheses. 3 plus 5 is 8. Next, 5 plus 5 is 10. Well, in here, 2 plus 8, the answer is also 10. As you observe, the groupings of the numbers or the groupings of the addends does not affect the result. That is why we got 10 is equal to 10. Next one. Well, in here, these are the factors with different groupings. Say we have 2 times 3 times 5, which will be equal to 2 times 3 times 5. So again, let's perform first what's inside the parentheses. 2 times 3 is 6 times 5. So in here, what's inside the parentheses, we have 3 times 5. And 3 times 5 is 15. So next, 6 times 5 is 30. And 2 times 15 is also 30. 
Now, as you observe, the groupings does not really affect the result when you add or when you multiply. Next is distributive property, multiplying a term by another term. For example, A times the sum of B and C. This will be equivalent to A times B plus A times C. So let us have a specific example. Say we have 5 times the sum of 2 and 3. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 5 times 3, we have 15. And 10 plus 15 is 25. Another. 3 times 9 plus 4. 3 times 9 is 27. Plus 3 times 4 which is 12. Now 27 plus 12 is 39. For example, 6 times 4 minus 3. So this will be 6 times 4. We have 24 minus 6 times 3. We have 18. And 24 minus 18 is 6. Next, 7 times 5 minus 3. 7 times 5 is 35 minus 7 times 3 is 21. Now, 35 minus 21 is 14. Next. Additive identity property. This states that the sum of any number and zero is the given number itself. For example, a plus zero is equal to a. Five plus zero. The answer will be five. Today we have three plus zero. The answer will be three. Zero plus eight. The answer will be 8. Another. Another. Negative A plus 0. For example, negative 2 plus 0. The answer will be negative 2. Another. 0 plus negative 5. The answer will be negative 5. And negative 8 plus 0. The answer will be negative 8. It's very easy, right? Next, multiplicative identity property, which states that the product of any number and 1 is the given number itself. For example, a times 1 is equal to a. Say we have 5 times 1. The answer will be 5. Another, 3 times 1. Of course, the answer will be 3. And 20 times 1, the answer will be 20. Another, negative a times 1, the answer will be negative a. Say we have negative 5 times 1, the answer will be negative 5. Another, negative 10 times 1, that's correct, the answer is negative 10. And the last one, negative 9 times 1. That's correct, the answer is negative 9. Very easy, right? Next, additive inverse property. This states that the sum of a number and its opposite is 0. So we have a plus its opposite, which is negative a, then the answer will be 0. For example, 8. And the opposite of 8 will be negative 8. So when you get the sum of it, the answer will be 0. Another, 5 
plus, that's correct, negative 5, this will be 0. Next, say we have here negative 3. We'll add what? That's correct, we'll add 3, then the answer will be 0. Now, say we have here negative a plus a is equal to 0. For example, negative 2 plus its opposite, which is 2, the answer will be 0. Another, negative 6 plus its opposite, which is 6, the answer will be 0. Now say we have here 8. That's correct. We'll have here negative 8. So negative 8 plus 8 is 0. Next, multiplicative inverse property. It states that the product of a number and its multiplicative inverse is 1. So say we have a times its inverse, which will be 1 over a, the answer will be 1. For example, 5 times 1 over 5, the answer will be 1. Another, 3. Now what is its inverse? That's correct. We have 1 over 3 or 1 third. And the answer in here will be 1. Another, say we have negative a times negative 1 over a, the answer will be 1. Because when you multiply both negative, the answer will be positive. Say we have negative 7. The multiplicative inverse will be negative 1 over 7. And from here, the answer will be 1. Another. Negative 12. That's correct. The multiplicative inverse of this will be 1 over 12. Negative 1 over 12. And the answer will be 1. Questions? None so far? It's very easy, right? 